Welcome back to the 200 challenge. We have 123 kilos left to the target. So it's going really well. Thank you everyone for watching. It means a lot to me the feedback and the comments I've gotten. The purpose and the reason I'm doing this is really to give a little bit back to the Porsche community because I've learned so much myself on the forums, on the videos, on the threads out there online that I thought it's time for me to give back a little bit. Today it's fronty business, meaning we're going to go after the front of the car, we're going to look into the climate system, we're going to look into the brake system, the fuel system and general harnessing and so on, and see if we can do something that is a little bit more purposed to, uh, to what I'm doing with the car. This car will be street legal in the end, but really the orientation is, is track, because that's what I'm using this car for, and that's, that's what my dream car is about. So this might not fit every application for these cars, I do understand that, but, but this is what I want to do with my car. So with that, we're going to start over at the front. We're going to do a lot of digging here today. So there's three main areas. It is the brake system, it is the fuel system, and it is the ventilation system. There's some other parts here that are very easy that I'm just going to breeze through, like the, uh, the spare tire here and the jack. Uh, I don't consider those part of this project, although it's very heavy components because it's things you can really take out and that's not really what I'm going after. Okay, good. So let's have a look at what the various components in here are. Uh, from the top, we got the ventilation system up here. Gonna be real fun to dig into that. I've used the heat once on my car, I think, so I don't think I need heat. And that's really the basis of what we're gonna do with the, with the ventilation system. Uh, here we have the center electric which uh, we dug out in one of the previous episodes, so this is completely empty, so that's going to go out, of course. Fuel tank, everyone knows what this is. Uh, we have a heavy-duty uh, washing reservoir here to, to wash the windscreen. It sits on a separate button on the dashboard. This was a separate option in, uh, when you bought these, these 964s way back. Uh, this car actually has two systems for washing the windscreen. You've got this one and you've got another one on the other side of the bulkhead under the, the left fender. Down towards this end, we uh, can see a little bit more. We see the ABS brain here, part of a very old school ABS setup where you have the brain here and you have the actual pump here. Uh, it doesn't look like this in any modern car and it was really one of the early on ABS systems on the 964. Nowadays it's one unit and it's much smaller. Uh, we have the actuator unit here for the uh, AVD, so this is the lateral transverse diff that is actuated by this one here. Uh, we have my power steering pump here. I don't have it on the camshaft as it typically is on the 964, I've moved it up here. Uh, we also have a lithium battery here that I already have installed. Uh, here's the uh, booster pump. So the C4 and the RS, they have a high pressure system rather than having this big vacuum reservoir that you have uh, around the master cylinder. Uh, this one then puts pressure into an accumulator that sits here. It's maybe a little bit difficult to see from there. And then this one helps out the master cylinder. So this is... This is the fuel pump assembly here. There's three tubes or three hoses that goes from this one. And one is the uh, fuel into the engine and one is the return since this is an injection car. The third one actually has to do with, with emissions. So this one here actually goes from the expansion tank up on top of the fuel tank and at a certain RPM there's a valve that will open on the engine and it will suck the, uh, the air from the expansion tank all the way down through something called the carbon canister and then into the manifold so that that uh, uh, gasoline saturated air gets combusted inside the engine. So typically with the, with the race fuel tank, uh, you don't have this. Okay, that's the end of it. Right there. Tank is empty, we're almost ready to take it out. I've already taken the strut brace out, which sits over here. Uh, I've loosened the, the strap here that, that holds the tank down. I've loosened the, the connections for the incoming fuel. Uh, up here, there's one more connection. This is, if you remember from down under, we were talking about the vent line. The vent line actually ventilates this, which is the expansion tank of the fuel tank. I'm sure there's residual fuel in this tank, so I'm gonna just take it out, put it outside so that it can air out. So why on earth did we spend all of that time getting a fuel tank out? 
Uh, one piece may be obvious that's to provide access to this and as we tidy this area up we, we really need the space. The other thing is that the early 964 fuel tanks they had an inherent issue with uh, when you made a really hard uh, right corner uh, you get fuel starvation as soon as you're below like a quarter tank and I have this on my car it, it happens uh, especially on one of the, the tracks in Sweden all the time as soon as you make this right turn that's not really good for your engine and I, I'm gonna try to see if I can do something better with that uh, the newer tanks like the newer 964 tanks or the 993 tanks they're better at this so that would be a short choice uh, I'm also going to look into another option here with the fuel cell that I'll show you a little bit later in this episode. So what we're going to go after next is, is this piece here. So this big steel sheet here with this little box here. This is what holds the center electric. If you remember one of the previous episodes, we tore all of this electrical uh, system out uh, for the benefit of replacing this with the PDM setup, which is a much leaner, much more modern setup. So we're going to go after this now. This one sits with a few bolts and it sits with a few bolts inside this one here. So once you have this one out, you can just lift this, lift this, this chunk of metal out here. Uh, I think I've used the heat once on my car. It might be better to just slim this down and, and go for something much, much leaner than this. Something's holding this guy down. I've loosened the bolts here, loosened the bolts on the inside, but still it is completely stiff. So uh, I need to do a little bit of uh, reading up here and figuring out what is holding this guy down. Wah! I, I imagine that just providing fresh air to the car is something you can do with something a lot smaller than this. I wanted to make sure I don't leave myself stranded here for, for one of the next steps. So before I take the brake system apart, I want to make sure I loosen all the wheel nuts. Uh, they sit with uh, above 400 newton meters each and, and they've been there for a while. So I have a really long extender here. I have a jack stand under the wheel. I'm going to try to hold the car while I do this. And we'll see if I can, I can actually get this one loose here. Ah, wheels are turning. <laughs> Need to find a way to really try to empty the, the entire brake system here. So what I have here is I just connected uh, a little vacuum, uh, uh, vacuum sucker here. So with this one and someone pumping on the brake pedal, I can just suck everything through the system. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to do that on all four calipers just to get really as much uh, brake fluid as I possibly can out of the system before I disassemble it. It took a few attempts to, to get all the brake fluid out. While doing this, I learned something new that I actually didn't know about the, the brake fluid reservoir here, so I'm going to show you that. The reservoir is actually sectioned here. Uh, I, I knew that, but not to the extent that it's sectioned. You have the high pressure two sections here. This is the feed for the high pressure pump. And here you have the return for the AVD system as well as the booster unit for the master cylinder. Then you have the feed here for the um, uh, rear wheels, the feed for the front wheels, and then you have the clutch over here. So as, as you start depleting the system, they actually empty out one by one here. It's pretty neat to see. Time for the ABS to make an exit. This is a three-channel ABS. You see that because you see it has a connection to R, which is uh, right, L, which is links, uh, left. These are the two front wheels. You see that it's got an H. This is for Hintern. Uh, the two rear wheels are connected because this is a three channel setup so whatever the left wheel does the, the right wheel does as well in the back normally in this setup also you will see on the rear wheels you'll see a reducing valve here i've taken that out on my car to increase the the brake force on the rear wheels it works great on these cars the other two connections to this goes to the master cylinder it's a two two circuit setup so one here and the other one there here's another point of interest here so you can see there's one, two, three connections here. And there's a connection piece here with only really three holes in it. Uh, I'm gonna have to change this piece here to I believe it's a 993 RS that has a four channel system. So we need to, to penetrate four connections here for the bulkhead. Also need to get the uh, pressure accumulator out. So the, the booster pump will put pressure into this one. 
so that you always have a steady maintained pressure there and if for whatever reason the the power fails to the booster pump or whatever you still have pressure in this one for for a while and and this feeds the uh the, the booster unit on the master cylinder as well as the avd one two three bolts are out all the pipes are out the two feeds the the three channels electric connector is out the little ground cable in the back here is out let's see if we can get the the whole chunk out here so three horns in total one must be for the alarm or two is for the alarm and the third one is for the horn one of these matters it is for sure uh, some connectors for the cables going to the front lights and the front section of the car then of course we have the oil fan here uh, in my setup here i'm going to have one connector to the oil fan and i'm going to control it uh, using a pwm signal from the pdm uh, so much less cabling here still going to need the lights of course still going to need a horn but all the rest goes out Quite nice routing of the, the cables here in the front. It uh, starts over at the center of electric, of course, but it, it really goes over and ends up here. You have the wheel sensor here. You have the brake fluid reservoir here. It comes up, picks up the lights, picks up some of the ABS stuff here, goes around, picks up the ABS brain, goes in out for the fender, and then comes back to the center electric. So the last piece with clearing this out here is uh, emptying out the power steering pump and, uh, and taking this out. This is a homebrew, as you can see. This belongs to Mercedes. This is how the power steering connection looks from uh, from down below. Uh, it comes in through the bulkhead like this, and then it goes up to the steering rack like that. This this is a great mod if you haven't done it. I have my sump tank under it, so I'm just going to release the connections here and just let it let it bleed for a while. I'm going to make a little mock up of uh, how I want Frank to look in the end. So I'm going to do some high end fabrication here. To my help, I have this. I want to share some of my ideas for, for how I want to organize things up here in the front since this is not going to be the original setup. Uh, this is a little bit like playing house when you move stuff around and trying to really be clever about it. Uh, first round is uh, the fresh air, so I'm using this as a mock-up. Uh, Porsche actually has a, a fan unit, which is a pretty slim unit that they use on the older cars, so I've ordered one of those. Uh, then you need something here like a fan box. DP Motorsports has a cool one of those, so I might see if I can get one of those or I'll fabricate something myself. We'll see what I do about that. This is where my high-end fabrication skills came into handy. So this divider will probably be made out of carbon fiber in the end. It will close shut towards the two sides and it will carry the original seal here so that this area doesn't get rainwater, which is very important. It's going to carry the PDM that will distribute power to all the things in here, as well as connect to the instrumentation and the ECU. Battery will have a routing back to the starter and generator, otherwise it will distribute power through this one here mainly. So this makes for a very nice distribution of the cabling here. This is not heavy, one and a half, two kilos, so it doesn't obstruct the central gravity. So I think this could be a really nice setup for this. This is what I'm thinking for the front. Put the ABS back, this is a newer four channel unit. Uh, so put it back here close to, to where the other one was so that you have a nice connection to, to where it goes into the actual car. Power steering, put it as far up front as I possibly can. These are pretty heavy. I'm going to look into the one from Porsche which might be lighter and might be a slicker unit. Let's see about that. I'm also thinking about the fuel tank set up here because you could either just go with the original tank and I'm going to show you how that looks in a, in a second here or you can go with something more race oriented, which would be a fuel cell. This is how a 65 liter, that's 17 gallons, fuel cell tank would look in a car like this. So the benefit with doing this would of course be pushing the center of gravity forward and downwards. So that could be a benefit since I'm taking a lot of weight out in this compartment here, and that's not necessarily good when you have all of the weight in the back. Uh, there are some safety concerns with this that you have to address and without addressing that I'm not going to go this path of course. With this you'll have to have something like this. This is a fuel cell unit. This particular one comes from Nuke Performance. So uh, what this one has is it has a lift pump and then it has a catch tank with an internal fuel pump in it. So what this one does is it allows you to run the, the fuel tank completely dry without having engine starvation which you cannot do with a 964 tank. Uh, it has all the connections neatly up here, so fuel inlet, fuel return, then you have a vent line here, the, the level sender goes there, 
Uh, it will also allow you to make a really nice setup here for a center filler cap, which is something that I might want to do. Uh, addressing safety concerns with this. This one allows you to turn the car upside down without the fuel coming out because it has a non-return valve for that. Uh, I'm also leaving a gap all the way around here and most importantly inside of this tank will be what's called a fuel bladder and that's an FIA approved way of doing it and that means that even if you squash the tank the fuel will not leak out so that's a way of addressing safety concerns with having a fuel tank up here. I'm not sure I'm going to do this but this is kind of a fun train of thought looking at the various options on how to do this. Let's see what I do. So this is the other way of doing this, maybe more straightforward. Uh, this 964 tank is not a bad boy by any means at all. It's actually a pretty good tank. It does have a fuel starvation issue and, and maybe it's a little bit high up in the car. But no, no big issues really to solve here. Would be much more straightforward doing it like this. If I do this, I'm going to use a more modern tank, like a 993 tank that doesn't have the fuel starvation issues. Let's see what I end up doing here. Okay, here we are, scoring time again. Love this part. We're going to start with the ABS. So the current setup with the ABS is 1985 technology. It's an ABS 2.0 with a, a separate brain like this. It's a three channel setup, meaning the, the rear wheels, they're, they're connected. This weighs in at six and a half kilos more or less uh, as a comparison i have an abs 5.7 here just to show you how they look it's a fully integrated unit meaning there's only one harness connector here and a lot less cabling on this one now uh, i'm going to use an abs 8.0 which is the same as they use on the newer 997s and the caymans uh, they weigh on at one and a half kilos so we're down five kilos on the abs only and we get a four channel setup, which is great. Next runner up is the ventilation system. So we have this big beast here. It's a good unit, I have to say that. It has a lot more capability than what I need because I only use fresh air in my car. Uh, this unit alone is eight kilos together with the resistor unit here for different fan speeds as well as this unit. I'm going to have just a button uh, just next to the dash there that gives me various fan speeds connected to the PDM unit. So this goes out as well. This comes up to nine and a half. The fan setup I'm going to have is about one and a half kilos. So we got eight kilos on the fan unit itself. Didn't speak so much about this one, the, the front cover, the hood. Uh, this one weighs in at about 16 kilos. The carbon fiber alternative will save me about 11 of those. Next runner up is random cables, bracketing and, and things that I just don't need with the PDM setup. This one is uh, 6 kilos. I'm going to replace that with something else of course, which looks like this. Uh, I did a crew for this in episode 166, but I'll, I'll put it in anyway. So that means we're down 4.5 kilos on cabling alone. We're going to add the horns, because we're just going to have one, not three horns in the car. We're going to have the washer fluid tank and the bracketing that uh, where the central electric used to sit. This is all sheet metal, so this is heavier than what it needs to be. We are at 11 kilos, considering that we've added this in. In summary, 35 kilos this time around. Five of it comes from the ABS. 11 of it from the, the cover, the hood, another 11 from the bracketing, the harnessing, the uh, washer fluid tank, the horns, whatnot, another 8 from the ventilation. So a little bit more than what I thought. As you might know, I'm not taking anything into account for the fuel tank. I think the two setups are about the same weight. The question there is, is whether if I want to do it, if I want to move the tank forward and, and uh, lower down to, to really improve the handling a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense or not yet. So I'm happy to take feedback on that and let's see what I do on that. That is the end for today. We started with 123 kilos left to the target. We found 35 looking at brakes, looking at fuel system, ventilation system, bracketing, harnessing, fluid tanks, whatnot. Meaning that next episode we have 88 kilos left to go to the target. So, so that's really good. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe to my channel. Your feedback means a lot to me. Next time around, we're going to go either after the carbon fiber panels and, and doors, 
or we're gonna take the four wheel drive out. I haven't really decided which one it is. So if you like what I'm doing, see you then. Thank you very much.